Welcome to Oregon Coastline. This is the Pacific Ocean and I am in Newport, Oregon, famous uh, location for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is actually a place where the Coast Guard docks in and out of and NOAA has an active office as well. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Juan de Fuca plate. That's why I'm recording today. Juan de Fuca is an oceanic plate, a small one, that's subducting under the North American plate about 35 to 70 miles from where we stand right here. The reason that it is doing that is because it is pulling apart from the Pacific plate uh, further out to sea than the 70 mile mark and that's causing it to have a mid-oceanic ridge which pushes it away from the Pacific plate making it head towards North America. So essentially it's like a bumper car effect. That's important because it subducts right along this coastline all the way up through Washington State and even parts of Northern California. Thus, this fault line uh, sometimes ruptures and you can imagine as a plate's coming in and it dives and it cracks and it bends that you could have some earthquakes. Some of those earthquakes are big enough to produce things called tsunamis. Please do not call them tidal waves. That's not what they are. They are tsunamis. And these tsunamis are a part of life out here. And um, there are warning signs all over the coastline telling you where to evacuate if one were to occur. But I wanted you to actually put your eyes on a place that's famous in the world because this is where the Cascadia uh, subduction zone is located. Just right off this shore, about 35 to 70 miles. That's not very far at all. So if we were to have slippage along that plate, it wouldn't take very long for a very big uh, tsunami, depending on the size of the earthquake, uh, for a tsunami could reach here in minutes or an hour. So depending on uh, how fast it travels. So more to come and see you at the next stop. Bye. Greetings, geologists. I am standing at Johnson Ridge Observatory and Mount St. Helens, Washington. This is a composite volcano. Uh, after being here today, I've learned a little bit more about this volcano. It produces dacite, which is somewhere in between andesite and rhyolite. So it sits right on that boundary of being almost felsic, high in silica for an intermediate type composite volcano, which means that it made real thick, pasty, uh, magmatic material which contributed to the lava dome that's actually kind of covered by clouds right now um, inside of the face that was blown out. So if you can imagine that around 832 in the morning on May 18th on 1980 this particular volcano totally lost the front side of its uh, face Essentially what happened was an earthquake that measured 5.1 on the Richter scale was in relationship to the lava dome that was starting to undo itself and a big landslide occurred. When the landslide fell down the side of the mountain, it released the pressure in the lava domes, producing a just gigantic pyroclastic cloud that came out with it. So the pyroclastic cloud snapped off all the trees that were that made up this really amazing old growth forest that used to be here, totally snapped them off at their sides, destructing everything in its path. So there's been a time of recovery since then, uh, not just in planting, but in life. Even within days after the eruption, there was new life that uh, animals who survived the eruption by burrowing, uh, who surfaced at the, to come and start helping reseed and replant. So this process will continue as long as uh, Mount St. Helens is not erupting. Life will continue to flourish. We'll probably see the old growth forest return uh, if she doesn't erupt between now and then. But if she does erupt, we'll see devastation just like we saw before. So the reason she's a funny shape uh, volcano as compared to most uh, really tall composite conical shaped tall uh, summits is because she's lost a big section of her front face from a lateral eruption that occurred back in 1980. I'll see you at the next stop. Bye. Greetings geologists from Mount St. Helens. I am reporting to you on the pyroclastic devastation that occurred in the area on May 18th of 1980. And I would like you to envision that what was behind me that snapped off tree now was a thick 
forest of old growth forest trees, big, large alpine type trees. They're obviously not here now, but if you drive about 30, uh, 30 minutes from here, you will see the old growth forest or what's beginning to come back as the old growth forest because they've been replanting in Mount St. Helens as a tree farm to try to revitalize the ecosystem that was destroyed. When I mean destroyed, it was destroyed very quickly. Within 10 minutes of the eruption, this entire area was wiped out pretty much clean of its vegetation and most of its wildlife. Some of the wildlife survived that were burrowers or in places that were protected from the pyroclastic flow. But anything on the ground pretty much was wiped out. So you have to imagine what kind of force and power could snap off a tree like you see behind me. Something pretty incredible. So that's called a pyroclastic flow and these things can travel several hundred miles an hour. And considering we're just uh, a few miles from the actual north flank where the actual eruption came out of the side of the mountain, this area would have been hit hard and very, very quickly. So the trees didn't stand a chance. They were just killed on impact. So where are the trees now? Most of the trees are buried in either lahars, which are mud flows, or they are simply left on the ground right where they were snapped right off of their uh, trunks, or they're covered with ash and pyroclastic debris. But uh, you can go all over the park and see these trees. They're pretty phenomenal. I'll be putting some still shots uh, in PowerPoints for you to be able to look at and see what I'm talking about with the devastation. So it's coming back to life, which is the good news. Uh, even on its own, plants are revitalizing, trees are starting to grow, but it's got hundreds of years before it can return to the old growth status that it was before the 1980 eruption. So the question is, will it have a chance to do that before it erupts again? We don't know. Uh, we know that the lava dome's growing in the middle, so the fate could be exactly the same thing as it was back in 1980, or we could wait another couple of hundred years or a thousand years and it erupt again. But Mount St. Helens is young, just 300,000 years of age, and she's had multiple, multiple, multiple events of eruptions of all different magnitudes. So it would be safe to say that she'll continue her work as long as the Juan de Fuca plate continues to subduct under North America. I will see you at the next stop. You have a wonderful day. Bye.